Hello YouTube uh, community. I just wanted to make a short video on why I am no longer a follower of the Islamic faith and in fact I've become an atheist. Uh, the crux of the matter is uh, besides the logical argument of there being no evidence uh, the concept of no evidence really boils down to we have no uh, infallible books, at least when you talk about the monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. All of the books have mistakes. They have errors. And for me, in the absence of an infallible book, I see there is no reason to believe that there is any um, supreme being because uh, he has failed or it has failed to communicate with us humans in a way that will withstand the test of time which an all-knowing all-powerful uh, entity should know that at some point in time human beings will test the validity of the authenticity of the book or books and find that it will be false. So I believe that entity, whatever you call them, should have anticipated that and adjusted uh, the game plan to uh, include that in this, um, I guess, quest to be uh, the supreme being of all time and recognized and worshipped in all time. Uh, many Muslims will tell you that the Quran is infallible and then you have uh, even without the apologetics you have a number of people uh, who have endless websites on the errors within the Quran um, which really wouldn't phase a Muslim to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, because the arguments default to whether well, they're misinterpreting the Arabic or they don't know the science of hadith or they don't know um, basically uh, how we uh, judge or interpret or they're not a scholar or they're unlearned or something's wrong with the person's knowledge to where this is not a plain language religion. Um, which, what I know in Arabic, uh, the vast majority of Muslims are actually ignorant of what it actually does say. Uh, even Arabic speaking ones, because I know a number of Arabic speaking Muslims who really don't understand the Quran themselves um, and would have to refer to a scholar. So when you have a situation where you have a guy or a person interpret what you're reading, um, it wasn't meant for all mankind for all end times. So, and in fact, that's one of the reasons why you get so many contradictory uh, fatwas or edicts, or um, because it's left up to scholars and who's good and who's bad, who's knowledgeable, what's the criteria for a scholar? Um, I've heard lecturers say that. A scholar knows when a person's a scholar. Um, it's the <laughs> worst thing I could think of as far as uh, basically it's a club and when we feel as though you've joined this club then you're a member and so that's extremely uh, it's not objective it's subjective. Uh, with that being said uh, I will plan to make a series of videos on um, the moral and scientific fallacies or scientific fallacies but the the moral fallacies too I guess <laughs> of uh, Islam and I won't go into the allegorical meanings I won't go into the things that the apologetics say 
What I will do is use the Quran as proof against itself that it's false. And I will use um, verses and texts and hadith that are uniformly agreed upon, are interpreted this way, and is judged to be historically and even today uh, accurate as far as the hadith and as far as the Quran. Of course, it's, it is what it is. But uh, there are verses in the Quran that are conveniently overlooked and particularly on the apologetics website. So the reason why I decide to make this video is because a lot of ex-Muslims um, don't, they're afraid for their lives, they don't want to speak out, whatever. Okay, I'm not worried about that stuff. Uh, but I do want to counteract the lying that is done in the name of Islam to deceive people who are not knowledgeable in Arabic, um, but believe that because you don't have the deviations in the Quran as you do in the Bible and the Torah, that it's okay. And for that, are there mistakes in the Quran? Yes. Are there as many mistakes in the Quran as in the Bible? No. And as such, uh, that was one of the things I rode with. Is it, is it in the original Arabic? Uh, yeah, as far as we know, as far as back as we can go, yeah. Pretty far back. Better than the Bible. Better than the King James Version. I mean, you have texts that are lost. Who speaks Greek and Aramaic and Latin and, you know, it's, it's uh, to an average Christian, there's no way they can go back to some of these texts. Even Hebrew, they can't go back. So, but that being said, this is basically uh, me coming out saying I don't believe in any deities whatsoever. I don't believe that any exist. If I default to deism, well, there's no proof of that either. So it's still a form of mental gymnastics to try to get to that uh, leap of logic or faith or whatever and uh, it's a leap of faith to get there it's not a leap of logic because there is no logic so until I see something otherwise that is repeatable and verifiable then I won't believe it. if I wake up and have a dream that I'm in paradise or I get blinded one day and I see some angels that's not gonna do it for me uh, I have to have an angel come here and we gotta talk and I'm gonna show him to some other people we are gonna get him tested we are gonna find out okay there's a figment of my imagination or are you real and so until that happened I'm gonna stay the way I am um, I hate to table term atheist because I'm really just a human being who doesn't believe in deities and I'm not a humanist or a secularist I'm not I really hate labels to be perfectly honest with you uh, I believe in human beings doing the right thing to other human beings and what's the right thing well the things that that give the best benefit and the least amount of harm uh, aka some variant of the golden rule and that's it. Until next time.